Greetings to you from Rural. You're watching us tonight. Thanks for joining us uh, on the Tuesday edition of the show. It's the first one for the week. We promise to make it worth your while. There's a lot uh, to talk about. All I ask is that you sit back, relax, and enjoy what's on offer tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us once again. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Of course, it's the season of the Olympics, so we have a few days to go. But let's just uh, take out uh, some few stories outside of the Olympics, because when we start, we're not going to have time to talk about any other thing apart from the Olympics, because it's upon us, the biggest sporting event on the planet, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. So we'll talk about all of that, but let's try to take out some of the stories are uh, not directly related to uh, the Olympics. And where do we start the show uh, tonight? I'm, later on on the show, I'm going to int introduce my, my partners. I have some people you're going to love to listen to. But first, I want to quickly take you through some of the stories uh, making the rounds. Let's talk about Anthony Joshua. He will uh, put up his titles against uh, uh, Alexander Yuzik on uh, September 25 at the Tottenham Stadium. Uh, it's been announced uh, today. Of course, we all wanted to see Anthony Joshua against Tyson Fury. That's not going to happen anymore. Both of them have hurdles to cross. The hurdle for Anthony Joshua comes in the form of the Ukrainian music. Uh, of course, we're going to see what's going to happen. Uh, the September 25 is the date, and hopefully he will be able to get the job done. A lot of people are expecting great things from Anthony Joshua as he goes, as he moves on to achieve it. Uh, what has been his uh, desire all along to unify the heavy weight uh, category. Whether or not he will be able to do that, time will tell. First hurdle for him has to be using. So all the best to uh, the champ as he continues in his quest to get the job done. All right. So let me introduce my first partner on the show. He's here to talk about some interesting things happening in the world of football, especially now when the quest to discover talents and nurture them to, to, to start up is what everybody is uh, walking around the clock to do, especially when it comes to football. Uh, so, uh, of course, let me quickly introduce Sam uh, Adeyemi, joins me on the show. He makes his debut. Hopefully, we get to see each other some other time. But Sam, thanks for being here uh, tonight to uh, talk about uh, football. It's a great pleasure, Yemi. I really appreciate the time. All right. So, let, you know, in my intro, I talked about um, the quest. It, but let, let us start from there. There's a lot to, you know, uh, unpack from some of the things you are involved in. But why do you think now, especially in football, the quest to discover talents? Everybody's getting involved. Nobody's being left out. People just feel that there's just too much talent in Nigeria to allow go to waste. Totally. Uh, it's, uh, football is like a religion, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in this part of the world. We follow it through and through, mm -hmm. and there's totally no way you can deny the talent that we have in this country. Those who have excelled, so many of them. And when we talk about how well to make sure that some of other people get opportunities, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's just not that much opportunities. Yes. We have very few football clubs and mm -hmm. football academies and all the rest. Mm -hmm. And scouting is really not something we do much. So when those opportunities for raw talent who are right there on the streets this, who have yeah. been doing, yeah, doing, we've, they've got the raw talent. They just need that uh, exposure. They need the opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that is one of those things that it is paramount that we need to do right about now. You know, you, I mean, something I, you know, sense, I can sniff out uh, in your statement is that uh, a lot of people feel making that transition is very hard. And that is why people are interested in this, giving people the opportunity, even though you're here, it shouldn't be a barrier. Yes. Because you are here doesn't mean you can't play for Bayern. Doesn't mean you can't play for uh, Barcelona. You know, somebody just have to help you connect the dots and be the bridge. And that's it. That's it. That's what is necessary. Not everyone we have that uh, direct link uh, that you just get uh, uh, scouted and then be picked on the street. Sometimes you just need to get yourself together in an organized banner where you see people of like minds or mm -hmm. people who have done it in the mm -hmm. past trying to uh, mentor you, guide you on what yes. to do and what not to do. Uh, those who have conquered the, the, yes. the, the, the journey themselves, mm -hmm. they started from the grassroots mm -hmm. just like you and they got to the pinnacle of football. Mm -hmm. but by the time you have such people giving you an opportunity, then it's easier for you to 
just take you from right here mm -hmm. to that place that you're you looking journey. at. Yes, that, which is a, a great opportunity that I personally am involved in right now, and I feel it's what we need to really do for yeah. our people here. Yeah. Let's talk about your involvement and the involvement of all, a, a lot of the ex-internationals, talking about football, talking about how to help kids. Um, you, you'll be amazed at the knowledge of football that kids have. Mm -hmm. These days, on the streets, yes. you have guys who probably may not do well in maths, but if you t <laughs> ask them to tell you Manchester United's first 11, they'll tell you, plus the guys yeah. on the bench and probably the tactics the coach should have used yeah. uh, to, to win a game. And they even display those amazing skills right on the field. And I'm very happy to hear that you and, and some other guys are interested in giving kids that opportunity. Don't just speak about this and come and show what you're good at. Okay, the, the, yes. That's, so you know how you can discuss football everywhere you go, particularly in Lagos. Everyone seems to know something about, about football, what, yeah. what should be done or not to be done. And there are those who've got the genuine talent to also display it as well. So this is it. Okay, you do know this. You also have the talent. Why don't you just uh, let's create? Uh, yeah, let's create that as uh, a, 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 a platform for you to showcase it. And like I was saying, with people who have been there, people who have done it be before, let them come and tell you how to go about it and do your best so that people get to see you. I uh, say, okay, okay, come around. Uh, the uh, some ex internationals, the Joseph Yobo is mm -hmm. the former captain, of the Super Eagles, uh, Victoria the Weber. Victor, the people who have done all of this, and they say, let us tell you what you need to do. This is how you need to go about it. There's a lot that involves in football. It's not just about going on the pitch and play. There are ways that you need to do. There are people that even play football, and they're just, it's just likeness for a position. That's why they're playing it. They don't know the position they're playing, whether they fit into it. Yeah. We've seen stories of players who started as a striker, becoming a defender, mm -hmm. or even becoming a goalkeeper. Yeah, sure. And that's because there are one or two persons who have been able to, to guide, guide them. them. And that's what we're saying this time around. Just come around. Let's, let's help you. Yeah. As a young person, you're trying to cross and make, make a, a career, out, make of a career out of football. Why don't you just uh, make yourself available for this opportunity? Just register. You, you see people, like I was saying, like Joseph Yobo, mm -hmm. uh, teams of uh, <laughs> legends. Ex-internationals. Yeah. Ex-international -ex legends. Uh, the coach Unduka Ugbade, people mm -hmm. on net, a uh, talent. Uh, you we've have seen. Read, you've mm -hmm. read about... And you've heard about their stories, mm -hmm. and now you have the opportunity to, to learn, learn straight from, from them, from, from such guys. And the, the, the opportunity is looking at cutting across uh, every part of Lagos because it's majorly going to be happening in Lagos. You look at uh, uh, different areas. So that is, it an get -commerce, is it an all-commerce affair? Just you, you, you show up. I, I, know, but I know that when they get there, they will tell them, oh, this is, what you, <laughs> this is what you need to do. But is it something that once you are interested, you don't need to know anybody, you just that, that's show it. up. Just show up. Probably you may make, they'll tell you how yes. to get it. So this is it. You do a registration beforehand so that it can put you in a location that mm -hmm. is closer to you. Uh, Very you're sure looking, for yeah, looking for about three or four. Purposes. Yes, uh, three or four locations in, in Lagos so that you don't get to go too far. But these coaches, they come around and they see you do what you think you know how to do best. They judge you right there. You don't need to know anybody because that's the thing. Is that your talent that matters? You just come and display it, and they look at you and say, okay, "Yes, you're good enough. You progress." And then how good you are. It's also not offer hard. you advice. I think you so can add this to your game. Yeah, I think you yes, can do yes. This. We're looking at the sports uh, psychologists coming mm -hmm. in as well. Uh, people who are old and even physios. Because there are ways you play football that you don't get to commit some injuries. There mm -hmm. are some trainings and some that yeah, you have to go through. Sometimes we just go uh, players. Let me say amateur players just do basic trainings. But there are some trainings you need to do to keep yourself fit and not, not to get injured. So these uh, physios will be there at, alongside all the ex-internationals will be saying, and then they get to pick the best 11, which is what is uh, the best the 11. The idea is they, about... Yes, getting the best 11 and then they face so off in a competition. The best 11, the best 11 it, you know, let, let me understand you very, because I know there are kids listening to you. you. You show up, find a way to register, you get, you get into all of this. At the end of the day, these ex-internationals get to pick... 11 players, that, that's the idea. Yes, so the ex-internationals, we've got four of them. They have their own team, the 11 team. So they get to play each other. And the best team, which is the best 11 among these four teams, get to win uh, a good sum of money, about 5 million, right? We're talking about it. 
despite all of the fact that we, you've been so you're just providing <laughs> opportunities. <laughs> they are, yes, that's why. So it's not Who just benefit about from knowing the game. All these people, and then they just still right. still get to gain some money into okay. it, and right. as well, you might just even have opportunity to play for one of the best academy. In the world. It's, it's possible. All right. Uh, I wish you well in all that you do. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, 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 unfortunately, we don't really have much time to. Uh, maybe one of these days we'll check you Come out on, and yes. see. Uh, what you're doing, but uh, Sam Adebi, I want to thank you uh, for your time this evening. Thank Hopefully, you so much. you get to do uh, this some other time. We need to go for a quick um, time out. When we uh, come back, we'll uh, dive straight into all of the issues that we have for you. Basketball on the front burner on the show tonight, and of course, the Olympics majorly. We will be looking at all of that. Let's go for this quick time. I will come back for more sports tonight. ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。ごめん
maybe we can get ahead of ourselves and uh, try and look how far uh, this team can go uh, in, in Tokyo. Uh, yeah, thanks, man. I, I think uh, from where I'm sitting, I think this is the best possible roster that, um, that we can select. Um, uh, I, 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 I looked at all the names, and the only two names that probably most Nigerians will wonder about uh, would be Mie Oni and Jali Lokafo. Now, I've been following Jali, Jali, Jali's career uh, since he left college. I followed him around the, uh, the two, three NBA franchises he's played for. I know he's a pretty good uh, uh, player that can, that can play the both, uh, both, both the four and five positions. And, I'm so, and, and I know for a fact, or I'm guessing, that um, uh, he's brought in for E.K. Diogu, which is understandable. E.K. Diogu has been a fantastic, he, 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 he had been a fantastic ambassador for Nigeria. He played some excellent basketballs. He's been to the Olympics. And if we are talking about the, the, the next level we want, we want to get to, I guess a younger person will, will, will be needed to step in. And I think that's what uh, Dali Lokafo has been brought in to do. It's, it's, I, I don't think it's any disrespect to Ike Diogu. Wherever we go, whenever we talk about Nigerian basketball, his name will always be mentioned. So uh, that is that. And Jali has always said he wanted to play for Nigeria anyways. Um, I, I, I've, I've had some conversation with his dad and his uncle who manage him. And I know that he desired that, that he plays for Nigeria. As for Mioni, Mie came out of college uh, it, uh, about two years ago. He's a pretty decent guard and he's one of the, one of the young and, and upcoming guys. He has also never denied his Nigerian heritage. He wants to play for Nigeria. And so he stepped, for, he stepped forward. And from the, uh, from, the, uh, from the scrimmage and from the training sessions, the coach deemed him uh, good enough to, 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 play, uh, to play for the team. And he's there. And I've, I've seen some people say that, I've uh, had some people say that oh, some people will able to get the team there. The truth is that, even for the Americans, the team that goes to the Olympics, the players, they never play the qualifiers. A set of players go to play the qualifiers, instead goes to play the Olympics. Even on our way to the World Championships, remember that for every level that you played on the way to, on the, way to, to the World, World Cup uh, in, in Spain, um, uh, or, or in China rather, the, 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 the association and the coaches, they always pick a different set of players. The, more, the tougher the competition is, the more uh, uh, um, higher grade players they pick. And the team that went to the, uh, to, to the World Cup itself was quite different from the team that played the first round, first round of qualifiers. And so for me, I think it's a good roster. Um, from, from what the coach has seen, from, from uh, where, where they've gone so far, I think this, this, these are the best sort of players that he can choose for the games. Uh, let me ask you, we're about to go on a break, but I want to quickly throw this in. Are you worried about cohesion? You know, people are bringing that out, you know, some, I don't, I don't agree with them, but some though this team was um, hurriedly assembled. It doesn't have a spine. If people have been playing together, they understand themselves better. So are you worried about cohesion? Is this something anybody should be worried about? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, when we defeated the Americans in, in Las Vegas, that was the first thing the American media was saying here. They were saying that, oh, this team are brought, they are brought together. They've not played together uh, for a long time. And that's one thing that the coach, Greg Popovich, needs to work on. And that um, uh, they are still expecting two or three players. And that's why they lost to Nigeria and all that. So, look, for any national team, especially when you are assembling players who have been on a league that, that has been extended because of the pandemic, this is what you are going to see, see whether it's football or basketball. About question, the more they play together, the, more, the better they will get. And so for me, they played some scrimmages. They've won some, they've lost some. Um, when they are beating uh, 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 um, the uh, United States and Argentina, without, this, without the team being put out to this 12, nobody talked about cohesion. So I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, that's going to be a problem. I think they'll be fine. Okay. All right. Uh, we need to go on a break um, right, right about now, but I, I want to keep you on. There's still a lot of ground to cover. Austin Okunakman is still with me as well. So let's go for that break right about now. When we come back, uh, there's still a lot for you on Sports Tonight. All right, welcome back. Austin Okunakman is still uh, with me. And anytime we talk basketball, you can always see patriotism oozing out of uh, the things Austin says. But uh, patriotism aside, Austin, Let's look at our opponents at the World Cup. And I'm going to ask Bode the same question. The winnable games of the three, which one are winnable? Or do you think we can win all? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, what we, we saw at, um, in Las Vegas, who can bet against these D Tigers? Because you're as good as your last results, right? Yeah. So, if we want to talk about, you know, how we're scared of the guys in our group, you know, 
they are, they are also scared with what we did in Las Vegas. They will be tweaking and, you know, trying to see how they can change strategies and formations to suit our style of play. We defeated the number one team in the world, the United States of America. We defeated the number four team in the world. And then against Australia, whatever happened, happened. But that's basketball, you know. And that was the day when their shooting let them down. So with the Olympics, yeah, me and what I've always told you, not even being patriotic, I keep saying that COVID-19 has reshuffled the world. So for instance, one team that thinks that they are going to the Olympics with the same vibes and oh, by the time they get to Tokyo, they just realize that it's not the same anymore. And this is just, I feel it's the year for the underdogs. And with what the D Tigers have shown, that's why I said, let's not, let's not cry too much about the roster. Let's talk about the good things out of the roster. Let's talk about the Wamos being in the list. Let's talk about Gabe Vincent being on the list. Let's talk about the cohesion that they've been able to build and the times that they've been together getting ready for the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, look, in sports, we say impossible is nothing. Even if you say um, it's Nigeria against the United States of America four times at the Olympics, the records have it that we beat them in Las Vegas for the Olympics. So the United States of America will not come there and, you know, play us with some complacency. So that's it. We're right. as good as your last result. So they just need to sustain the momentum. They just need to correct uh, what they got wrong against the Boomers, the Australians on the, on the night, you know, shot better, defended oh. well, were a little bit sloppy. So let's imagine that if we had won that game against Australia, we will be, we will be putting out any form of fears out there. That's Nobody. True. That's true. That's yeah. True. All right. Let, let me go to Bode quickly. And um, I, I'm not a betting person, really, but um, <laughs> would, would it be safe uh, to be, put a bet on this team um, getting into the second round because f for me, even getting to the second round is is huge uh, in itself, especially considering uh, the teams we're going to play against. So, do you think this thing can get to the second round? And do you, which one are the winnable games of the three that we're going to play uh, in in, in uh, the uh, first round? Um, we play, I think, uh, Australia, Germany, and Italy. Yeah. Um, uh, the, 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 the the fact is that the Europeans will be wary of us, definitely. Uh, the Australians are the number two team in the world. And so uh, the results against them was expected just as we thought that, uh, that, um, uh, that, we, that we would lose the Americans. But we, be, we beat the Americans, and so the Australians came, came, came to us with a different uh, le level of prepar preparedness. And like Austin said, on the day, the shooting let them down. Look, basketball is a game of runs. Once you get the, if, if, you can, if you can get the first run on your opponents, the odds are that you are going to get close to getting a win. And so and once, once they were called from the start against the Australians and the Boomers were hitting all their shots, it was clear that it was going to be bad at the office, just as it was against the Americans. Once their shots were falling, it was clear that the Americans were in trouble. So for this, the second game against the Australians, and, and look, let me make one, one thing clear. Yes, all the players on your roster are expected, to be, are expected to be good enough to play. But that game against Australia, what the coach did that most people didn't see was that he, he, he started with players that he was thinking of cutting. And that's what the team that started against the Americans. And so when, when the Australians got hot, it was difficult to stem the tide. That second game will not be, it, it, we might not get the same result. I'm not guaranteeing that they beat the Australians, but it might not be the same result. That's on one side. The Italians are beatable, the Germans are beatable, they're Europeans, but these men, they're athletic, and on their day, they shoot as well as Europeans can shoot. And so if they get the first run, the odds are, the odds are that those two games are winnable. Now, where I start to worry is when they get to the quarterfinals. Now, they have changed the format, the way the Olympics are played. In the past, the way the groups are allocated, when you are third or second of the group, you play, the, you play the, as someone from, from a group that's already decided. Now it's different. Now, after the first round, everybody goes back into the heart. And you can play against anybody in the quarterfinals. But the, the only exception is that if the person that you have, the, uh, the, you can't play anybody that qualifies, qualifies with you from your group. So what it means is that for the second round, we can get the Americans, we can get the Argentines, we can get anybody, uh, we, we can get Serbia with a uh, Luka Doncic. So that is where it becomes a bit dodgy because if you get a bad team, remember it's a tournament, anybody can beat anybody. And if that happens, it depends on what they bring to the table in the arenas. But I've had people like you said complain about coercion. If they, if they start rolling from the, first, from the first round and they roll and they play well, then what, that, that, the quarterfinal will also be a toss-up. If, if they start playing well and their confidence builds up, like against the Americans, when they played well in the first two, three quarters, they, in, the, in the final quarters, when, when the Americans charged, they're able to keep momentum going. The same thing. If they start rolling early, 
the shots yeah. are falling. They are playing well. They, are, they get they start getting better as a team. Mm -hmm. Then they are, they, are, they are going to become pretty much unstoppable. It, it, they become a juggernaut, a landslide, a moving force. Yeah. And then everybody becomes scared. The confidence is high. They can go far. But All right. If they get to that second round, uh, to that quarterfinals, and they get a difficult team like the Americans, because if we face them, if if we get the Americans again, it's going to be a different ball game. Mm -hmm. They'll be ready. They'll be more yeah. aggressive, and they'll be brutal. And then we have to be ready for a dog fight. And then, of course, form comes into play. The number one in the world, we are, we are ranked fourth right now uh, in, in tournament play. And so, they are the same ahead. They'll be expected to win. So, yeah. anything can happen. Serbia, yeah. we look at Donkic, same thing. But once they get rolling, look, anything can happen. All right. All right. That's uh, comforting. <laughs> in a way, that's comforting. All right. Let's talk about uh, the, the ladies now and uh, look at the uh, list and address some issues. I'm very happy we have Body with us. It will help us through uh, some of, there's a bit of outrage, uh, you know, couldn't get some of the things that we wanted. Um, so there you have the D Tigress uh, roster Adora Elonu, Aisha Balarabe, Elizabeth Balogo, Promise Amukabara, Atoye, Iyigifa, Izide Kalu. Uh, you also have uh, Palas Kunai Apana, you have Ifi, Ibekwe, Odera, Chidon, Victoria Macaulay, Erika Ogubike, Amy. Amy uh, Okonko, that's uh, what you have on uh, the roster for the girls. Before I go to body, let me quickly go to um, Austin and uh, get his thoughts. And, of course, you can also throw in your, your thoughts about um, us not getting uh, NECA and us also not uh, getting uh, Elizabeth Williams, but wanted to play, but uh, were dealt a blow by FIBA. Uh, today, but your, your thoughts basically, yeah. But we, we didn't get in the club, but we got Erica, so we're okay. just gonna keep that, you know. Uh, so pretty much with this with this latest team, we uh, I think, um, it's still most of them that we have in there. And um, each time I talk about this team, I just want to say the positives because uh, they didn't just impress me, they shot a lot of critics when they won the Afro basket in Senegal. You know, and from then they've been getting better and better. Yes, one or two names I would have loved to come up, you know, and, and see in that list, but but they're not there. And and I've said, look, when you're going for a major competition as the Olympics, you you just keep that on the side and let and let the guys do the job. And Coach Otis Uli has actually shown from the moment he got into the job, I think what he did was to stay focused and build a team that can win. And he has shown that over and over again. So I, I, I don't want to question his expertise. I don't want to question the quality of the girls that he has picked already. But this is a D-Tigress team that I've followed over the years. I've, I've watched them play. There's something about them. There was a troll on, on, on Twitter about somebody saying something about you know, the girls being ugly. I look at the way they responded. There's just something about the team spirit. There's something about how they carry themselves mm -hmm. when they're about to go in for a major competition. And that's what I, I love. With, with FIBA and... Um, I'm, I'm turning down Neka's you know, um, chance to play for Nigeria. I think those things, again, um, but they will agree, it comes down to maybe documentation or the time frame in which you went about it, you know. So maybe we need to find ways to, you know, if you know you want to scout things to, 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 to go in your favor, you should make sure that you get on it on time and then do the proper documentation. But I'm pretty excited that, Neka, that Erica is in that mix. And, of course, some of the girls I've seen I promise back in the day, you know, yeah. Aisha, Steve Power and Strong. Um, this is a team that is respected in Africa. This is a team that's got world championship experience. And this is a team that, look, they just want to go out there and give their best representation for Nigeria, just right. as the main men's team. And you know, the fact that the men's team is doing well, it also propels them to do better. So All right. I'm rooting for the D-Tigress anytime, any day. Okay. All right. Let, let, let me go to Bode. Of course, it's two in one, your reaction to uh, the roast. And, uh, of course, what, what happened with uh, FIBA today? A lot of people felt uh, if, if we had gotten probably those two girls in, would have been stronger when, when we come up against the likes of, of the U.S. and all. But I want to get your thoughts on that and, of course, the situation uh, with FIBA, uh, of course, not, uh, uh, you know, with what happened, the judgment of FIBA, uh, you know, not allowing the girls in. Yeah, I mean, the fact is that um, uh, the team would have, been ab would have been absolutely better with, 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 the, with the two, with, with the sisters playing for them. Of course, you, you know about their degree uh, in the WNBA, how they are, they are one of the one of the uh, most one of the dominant players in that league, and of course um, 
uh, with Neka having been MVP twice, having, having been an NBA champion, you know that definitely uh, um, she, should have, should have been a massive addition to the, to, to, to the team. Um, I, I will leave my, my short conclusion for later, but it, it was always going to be a long shot to get both of them in because the FIFA, FIFA rules were clear. Yeah. Just at the same with the FIFA rules. Um, uh, uh, both of them are, they are represented the United States severally in different tournaments at World, World Cup. And um, uh, it, it was always going to be a long shot for them to make a switch right now. Um, if they are still in play in four years' time, and we qualify for the Olympics, the odds are that, yes, uh, uh, they are, they are, they, 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 they'll be eligible to play. Um, if they don't play for still, the U.S. again. If they don't play for, exactly. But I don't think that's going to happen because the U.S., you know, look, it, 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 has, be, it has become uh, acrimonious, really. Um, first off, even the media here, they are upset, quite upset that Neka, she remains on record as the only MVP of the uh, WNBA that has never made an, made an Olympic team. In fact, the first time she, she, she was cut out from that team, she, was, she has just won the MVP of the league, you know, and, and the same found, they, found, they, they found a way to cut out of the team. So that, that was bad. Even now, seeing what she has done in the league over the past four years, the excuse they gave was that she was injured, but there are, there are players on that roster who were injured or who, who, who was injured and who has a longer time frame to recover than, than Neka that is on that list. And people are saying that there are, there are players on, on that team that are meant to free for Olympics. Why not rest one of them? They've been winning gold medals, why not rest them? And so that has become acrimonious. And since she has declared an intention to play for Nigeria, I don't think uh, at the, 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 the USM selectors are going to look away again. So, Yes, in four years' time. Having said that, um, I think for the, for the girls, the game against the Americans, the scrimmage against the Americans that, that we saw, we saw how, 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 we, how, how the, the American girls managed them. That's the reaction. Remember, they played at the World Cup in Spain, and the Americans almost lost to the Nigerian, Nigerian girls. That was when Izine Kalu in her press statement said, we've been knocking. Now we are coming to break down the damn door. Sorry for the language. So the Americans had that, and that game, that scrimmage was the response. And trust me, when they get to the Olympics, it's, it's going to be a bit, a bit worse. Unlike the men's team, I worry about the question of the girls because, of course, like, like you saw, there are a lot of, new, there, there are a lot of uh, newer and younger players, but we knew this was coming because at the World Cup, there are a lot of three or four players who are, who, who are, who are on the downward spiral. And we also know that a lot of these young women, there are still more of them coming, by the way. They are in college, they are, they are coming to the NBA, they are making names for themselves, and they are girls. Some of these girls are taken from uh, from uh, from programs in Lagos and Enugu, to American colleges. So they are bona fide Nigerians who did not play the league here, who, who did not play the Nigerian league. So they are Nigerians. It's just that they have been exposed to the American way. So for me, the coach saw them, like Balogu, for instance. We knew she was coming. The others we knew they are coming. In fact, some of them are selected for one friendly that that um that the targets play uh, a, few, a few months ago. So you knew they were coming. But for me, for them, for, 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 for them, I worry about the cohesion, but also, just like the, um, uh, just, just like the, uh, the men, in their own case, they play the Americans first. And that would be dicey. But hopefully, whatever happened against the Americans, the Americans will beat everybody in the group. I think they, have, they also have one or two winnable games, and then it goes up in the air. But I'm more excited about them and the male team, because they, have a lot, they actually have a lot more players of Nigerian, of, 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 who are born in Nigeria, who are colleges who are coming through. They have a lot more. And I think over the next few years, we are going to see a lot, of, a lot more of, the, of these names. Having said that, I am surprised and shocked that Tasha Balarabe still made this team. Whatever she's doing, whatever the coaches are seeing, I don't know, but she's in the team. I'm happy for her. But hey, I do think this, and I'm going on record, this will be her last tournament. No cap. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> very, very interesting. But I'm also interested in asking you how far you think this team, having said all that you've said, um, how far do you think this team can go? Um, I, I could make a guess and say, I mean, they'll still get out of that group, but, but I don't know what you think. Well, at, at the World Cup, they, they, they got to the quarterfinals. I think um, at this one, too, they have the potential to go, get to the quarterfinals and, and, and go, one be, go, one be, go, go one better um, because of the experience. I mean, look, that's why the fact that there are, two, there are about four or five players in the team, the span of the team that went to the World Cup is still there. Yes, I'm missing one or two key players who are at the World Cup, but like I said, some of, some of them were, were, were on, the, on the decline. There are some that, there are some that are matured at that tournament, and there are some that have stepped up, like, 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 uh, like Elon, for instance. I, I, don't, I, was, I don't think she, she, was, she was a starter at the World Cup, 
Now she's a starter. So she's more experienced. She's wiser. And I think uh, they'll get this young ones and who will bring the energy of the bench, hopefully. And I think they can, they can at least, I think this team can make, can make uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the quarterfinals. And if they get lucky and their game comes together, they can get to, they, they, they can get to, the, they can get to the podium, please. All right, before we let you go, buddy, a uh, quick one from you. Men's event, women's event, the likely winner. So we just close our eyes and say U.S. Definitely. That's, that's his guarantee. There are two best teams in the world. <laughs> okay. Okay, but I'm, but I'm hoping uh, there's going to be an upset. All right. Uh, but Ogudi, I want oh, to thank yes. you for it. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. But Ogudi, I want to thank you for your time. It's always refreshing listening to you. Thank you for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Yes, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. So um, let me give Austin a slice of the pie. Austin, uh, let's go global now. I mean, we, we will be patriotic if we talk about Nigeria, but men, women, who do you think would turn up uh, with the medal? Or we should just close our eyes and say U.S.? No, I won't just, I won't just say we should close our eyes and say U.S. Because, because you know, of course, I'm the guy that loves oddity and um, the fact that they lost to Nigeria, particularly the men's team, you know, you just, just do jump up and say that they're going to win. With their women, yes, the United States of America can go on to win. But with the men's team, anything can happen, you know. And if D-Tigers is ranked fourth in the world now, I mean, what are we talking about? We, we can believe. Let's believe. Okay. Patriotism. Written all over that statement. But it's good to be patriotic. There's nothing bad about being patriotic. Uh, but let's add a, a, a dose of realism. But all right, all right, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Let's, let's move on to Austin. Uh, I have a lot of ground to... Uh, cover, of course, the last batch of Team Nigeria as the part of the shows are uh, off uh, the country to uh, Tokyo, Japan, where the games will be had. A lot of stories making the rounds we will talk about, but let's start from home. Let's start with Team Nigeria. Let's listen to the words of uh, the Sports Minister Sunday Diary, uh, the words uh, that he said uh, before the team made uh, departed uh, the shows of the country. Let's listen to that. We'll come back to talk some more on all that is happening in Tokyo. Over 11,000 athletes from 205 countries will be competing for medals in Tokyo. I'm happy that Nigeria will be part of the 205 countries. 58 of our athletes will be competing with the best of the best in the world. I'm happy that this team of athletes have spent years preparing with the support of the federal government, with the support of their coaches, with the support of their federations. We leave today to join the three batches that have gone ahead of us. We leave with great hopes for our country. We live with prayers for our athletes that they will excel and they will find strength in their legs and their bodies as they compete. We are hopeful that we will return back victorious with medals for our country. Yeah. All that is needed now from everyone is your best wishes. From all Nigerians, we need your best wishes for our, for our athletes. And above all, we need your prayers. Thank you, and we're off to Tokyo. All right. Thank you. And we are off to Tokyo. Uh, the words uh, of uh, the sports minister says, with great hopes uh, for uh, the country. Uh, yeah, hopes are great. That's Team Nigeria uh, departure. All is set now, Austin. We can only fold our hands and wait. We can't hear me. And uh, let's just um, say well done to the ministry. Um, uh, because of some of the things I've seen, there's been some level of organization aside from the Afa kids and Puma kids uh, saga here and there. Um, you would agree with me that in previous Olympics compared to this one, um, the, the, the team, the team have been, you know, a little bit, you know, in some level of, you know, organization and then people to an extent know what they're doing, particularly with the adopt campaign, uh, private um, organizations and individuals coming in to adopt athletes and then things, things looking good, you know, generally, yeah. So some reassuring words from the minister as the last batch of, of uh, Nigeria's contingent the jets out to Tokyo. Let's just hope that they give the country some good representation. 
as I said, uh, things are not the same anymore. Of first thing first, they must stay safe because you know I mean you see the news coming out of Tokyo uh, hasn't been pleasant, particularly with the, the number of cases they're recording since when more persons started arriving in the country. Mm -hmm. So please, Team Nigeria, stay safe, you know, and then compete, you know, in a very clean, you know, manner, and then give the, the country your best representation. All right, give the country your best representation. I mean, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. A lot of things happening in Tokyo. And we're going to dedicate the last few minutes we have on the show uh, to talk about it. I mean, scary words. One health expert said the bubble at the Olympics is broken. Uh, the Tokyo uh, 2020 president is saying canceling the Olympics is not totally off the table. I mean, those words are really, really scary. But we're going to do all of that when we return from this break. We'll have to go on a break right about now, the last one for the show tonight. We'll go on that break. We'll come to discuss some more on the Olympics. All right, welcome back. All right, they said there are two sides of a coin. Let's listen to the first side before we flip it. Uh, the, the other side doesn't look good. But let's listen to... Uh, the chair of the Athletes Commission, Kirsty Coventry, saying, for athletes, we don't have anything to fear. Everything is okay. Let's listen to her, then we'll come back to talk some more about the Olympics. You know, I think everyone is doing their best to ensure that it's a safe games for everyone. The, the protocols that everyone is going through, um, and uh, obviously, if... It, uh, an athlete or a coach or an entourage uh, member of the team within the village does after uh, coming into Japan test positive, then there are actions that are taken straight away to ensure the safety. So yesterday when I was in the village, there was no concern uh, from any athletes um, that they raised uh, with me. They, they all were just sharing the excitement that they had and, and, and how they wanted to just get on and start competing. You know, we understand concerns. These are difficult times. Um, but I think we'd like to reassure them again that everything is being done. I mean, today I think the latest figure is we've had nearly 30,000 tests at the airport of staff and, all those, of staff and athletes, um, all stakeholders. Each of those nearly 30,000 people has been twisted, tested twice before they even arrive. So all those, three, all those people have had three tests, 100,000 tests. The level of testing... Uh, the playbooks, as you've seen, as we've all experienced, are not very uh, easy to deal with, but it's important that we do all follow the rules. Um, and I think we can give them a level of satisfaction that everything is being done by us uh, to try and ensure that there will be safe and secure games. All right, so um, on the line, last few words, safe and secure. That's the worry. I said there are two sides of the coin. You've listened to the first side. And the second side are the things that I talked about. I mean, they're telling us, I mean, you listen to the chair of the Athletes Commission, look, we're doing our best, the athletes are not worried, but then you're hearing the chief executive, the president of the Tokyo 2020 saying, look, we, we might cancel this thing if we have reason to. And some Ed Elspeth saying, it looks like this bubble is broken already. Also, your thoughts when you look at the two sides of the coin, your thoughts, um, yeah, you have to do that for us quickly. Uh, but, but your thoughts, basically, is this scary or, I mean, it's just what to be expected? It is worrisome, yeah, I mean, you know, that's the word I've always used. And um, the IOC officials use the word concerns. You know, particularly if persons are saying, look, the bubble is broken, and now they are pressed that their persons are athletes already on ground in Tokyo, and we're thinking about cancellation, then, then we should be worried, you know. And, and I've, I said what I said at the start, that if there was no need to do the Olympics, then let's not do it, because now it's looking like it's going to be more disaster, because you've had, you have persons in your country listening to the IOC officials saying that, they get to do 30,000 um, tests in a day, you know. And you know the problem with tests. Sometimes you need to verify again, you know, depending on how careful they are. They can be mixes here and there. So it's a very difficult situation. We just hope that the cases are will drop and those dissenting voices will also drop. But as it is now, a very huge All dark right. cloud over uh, the, this, this Tokyo Olympics. Here. All right. All right. So... Uh, before we leave the Olympics, uh, another dose, comedy of errors, um, touch of controversy, and something that is quite laughable. And on one side, I'm happy it's not Nigeria. Uh, due to administrative blunders, some athletes that have landed in Tokyo are now being sent back home because 
of some clerical uh, errors. Six uh, Polish, Polish uh, I beg your pardon, swimmers have been sent home um, after landing in Tokyo because, of course, their names were sent to, you know, as part of the delegation, they were not supposed to be there based on FINA rules. And the president of their federation has apologized for the embarrassment. Sad, you know, yeah, me, but but it is what it is. Um, and, and you remember when I was talking about um, uh, NECA and um, the documentation to FIBA? Look, when you're dealing with with international sporting organizations, particularly with that of FIBA, the Olympics, you need to ensure that the documentation documentation is top notch. Sad that this has happened to this. Polish swimmers who have prepared and are looking forward to, to the Olympics, just, you know, administrative error. And this is what we're talking about. And Nigeria must learn from this because I just try to imagine that if this happens to Nigeria, uh, you know, the normal, and it has happened before. We, we would say, ah, it's the same, you know, fire brigade approach and a person is not paying attention to details. It's quite sad. Now, let's use this medium to also uh, mention that the Nigerian swimming uh, representative, our name, is not on the Olympics website as a, as a participant in swimming. So the NOC and the Minister of Sports should ensure that they check that now, particularly what has happened to these okay. Polish swimmers. It's just, All right. it's just unfortunate, but um, very, very, very it shows that we need to pay more attention to details. All right, Austin, before we go, our party shot on the show. I don't know how much time we have left. Let's talk about Anthony Joshua. Everything is confirmed that's going to fight Alexandra Yuzik. Uh, in September at the Tottenham Stadium. He's back to the UK, and um, it's going to be interesting. We all thought we were going to see him and Tyson Fury. That's not going to happen. It's going to be him against Yusik as he continues his quest to unify the titles. This is a holdo that he must cross, but as a lot of people have said, Yusik is a tough customer. It is. It is. You know I mean, a very tricky fighter. And this is somebody who is getting better fight after fight. I always say that um, the top guys out there, Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, and Dion T. Wilder, if I want to put anybody into that mix, is in there put Alexander Usyk, you know? And, and look, there's just something he has. There's this beef he has for British fighters that when he sees them, he just puts on his beast mode, you know? Uh, and the guy has climbed up the rank so well, you know, very decent and doesn't show respect to any of his opponents. Just goes there, does his business, and is out. But this is Anthony Joshua, oh. um, world champion, been there, done that, suspended. Right. The odds favor him. Sad okay. that we're not seeing him at first in Fury. But if he goes through this test, and then, then Anthony Joshua will definitely get all of the respect that he deserves from me. And not just me, but boxing followers also. Okay, so hopefully that's going to happen as he continues his quest. Well, that's how the cookie crumbles on the show. We've got to the finish line. I want to thank you, Austin, for your time on the show. Hopefully we'll do this later in the week. It's always a delight to be on the show. Thank you so much, Hermes. All right, that's the show today. Thanks for being with us uh, from start to finish. We'll be here again tomorrow. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye.